I've had this Smitty Built Overland rooftop tent now for over a year. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the things I like, some of my criticisms, and then I'm gonna answer several of the questions that you all submitted here at the end of the video. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and I bought this tent about 12 months ago, and over the last year, I have spent 26 nights sleeping in that thing out on the trail. But over that period of time, I have had it out in the desert heat, we've been out in the mountains in the freezing cold, and I've learned a lot about this tent. And so that's what we're gonna talk about here in this video today, guys. I'm gonna share with you some of the things I like, some of the things I don't like, and then I'm gonna answer a lot of the questions that I've been getting. Now, I am not going to do a full detailed spec review. We're not gonna talk about measurements and fabrics. I did that in an initial video, and I'll leave a link down below if you want to go check all that out today, we're just talking about pros and cons. The first thing we should talk about regarding this tent is the price. This is a budget tent, so to speak. I paid just under $800 for this tent, and in the rooftop tent world, there are plenty that are in upwards of $2,000, so this was actually a very good price. And the price to pay to sleep up off the ground and on a mattress, for me, that comfort is worth the price. Now, I did a little bit of math in Brad's head here, and I took that $800 and divided it by those 26 nights that I've spent spent out on the trail over the last 12 months, and that comes out to just over $30 per night sleeping in that tent, and that number will go down the more I sleep in it. That's actually pretty cheap. I mean, that's a lot cheaper than a hotel, and I'm pretty comfortable up in this thing. A lot of the common questions that I get about a rooftop tent is, do I leave it up there all the time, and how is it mounted to my roof rack? Now, I will say that I do not leave it up there all the time. I mean, running with that thing up there kills my gas mileage, usually about one and a half to two miles per gallon drop in my mile per gallon, which is not very good when your Jeep is your daily driver. So my sons and I, who are all over six feet tall, take this on and off, and we could do it in about 15 minutes, just, you know, the two of us lifting it on and off. Uh, it's about 116 pounds, so it's not that bad. You know, 116 pounds is pretty light compared to some of the other tents. Now, mounting it up there, when I initially uh, put the rooftop tent on, the rails that are on the tent base did not line up with my Rhino Rack platform because I got these big slats on the platform. So I had to re-drill some new holes and move the rails on the tent to have it sit right in between where the rails are. I think it would be better, instead of having this platform, to just have some crossbars to mount the tent on. That would be a little bit easier. Additionally, when I first got the rooftop tent, I had these low profile legs on my roof rack, and that was terrible. Trying to reach my hands up underneath there to get to the mounting hardware with the low profile legs was really difficult. So I upgraded to these taller legs. They're only about an inch taller, but man, it made a world of difference. And so I'm really glad I did that. It's not as sleek as it used to be, but it's definitely a lot more functional. Now, setting up and securing the tent when I'm done at camp, it only takes me about five minutes. I've got it down pretty quick. It's a pretty easy process. The only thing that sucks is if we're out in the mud and it's really dirty, it just kind of gets a little messy uh, climbing up and down there. Now, what I do is I just hop up on the rear tire or on the door sill to get access to all the straps and the cover. Some of you may remember that I used to have some cargo hinge steps that were on the side of my Jeep. And those were really nice, and I think if I wasn't six foot two, it's something that I would use a lot more. While I did use them, they just really weren't necessary, and to have them on the side of the Jeep all the time was just a little bit overkill. Now, the cover that comes with the tent is actually, it's very durable. It's held up really well. And what I like is it's got this massive Velcro strip all the way around that secures it to the edge. Taking it on and off is really simple. I know a lot of guys have uh, covers that zip on, and I've seen them struggle with those quite a bit. I like the cover because you can just throw it on and just snug it down, and the Velcro just holds it right. It's perfect. Now, there are a couple straps, though, that go across the tent over the cover, and those have not been holding up very well. They're already fraying. Uh, the Velcro is not holding. And what I don't like is they're just a little bit too short. So weaving those in and out to get them nice and secure is sometimes a little bit of a pain. I wish those were a little bit longer and I wish the Velcro straps on them were a little bit better. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with setting it up and the cover. 
Now in order to open up the tent, you've got to extend the ladder and that gives you the leverage to pull down and pop that thing open. And I will say I dislike this ladder out of everything on the tent. This is my least favorite thing. The ladder is a two-part piece and it runs on these rails here to extend it and it always, always sticks. And when you get dirt in these little grooves, which you will get dirt in there, it makes it even worse. You're, I'm always fighting with this thing to get it to open up. And then there's these little pins that have to line up in the holes and you've got to get it to line up just perfectly to lock it in so it's secure. It's just been very frustrating to use. I see ladders on other rooftop tents that are much higher quality than this. Now, I will say that there's two good things about it because you always got to say something nice. And one is it is strong once you get those pins locked in. And two, it's actually pretty long. Uh, my Jeep is on 37 inch tires and three and a half inches of lift. And this reaches all the way to the ground. I did buy an extension because they sell an extension for this ladder. I've never needed to use it. It always reaches down to the ground. Now you'll notice that I have the tent open to the driver's side of the vehicle. And originally I had it opening to the passenger side but what I found is I for whatever reason most of the stuff that I throw in the Jeep is always on this side so I flipped it around it just makes getting in and out if I need to grab something and hop back in the tent much much easier also when you first set up the tent what you're gonna do is you're gonna open all the little awnings and they've got these poles here to extend those and these poles have actually held up really well they're very strong and they're very easy to set up the only thing is there's these little rubber pieces that used to be on the end, these little end caps. Uh, and all but one of those have come off. Uh, but the poles are holding up really well. Most of the time, I don't open all the windows. What I usually do if I'm just overnight, which is usually almost all the time, because usually we're in one place and then we're moving on, I'll just open the main window here and set up the rain fly and just leave that and I'll leave the rest of it closed. But if I'm gonna be somewhere for multiple nights, then I'll open it all up and you know open the windows and make it look at all pretty. But usually this is normally the configuration that I'm running. Now the tent fabric, all the poles and hardware and the zippers, they're actually holding up extremely well. And I've had this thing in some pretty good weather conditions. You know, we've been in Baja where there was 30 plus mile an hour winds. And while the rain fly would flap around a little bit, the tent was completely strong. Also been in some thunder rain showers and never had any leaking, never had any issues with the tent. Uh, this little mesh here keeps bugs out. It does a great job. Now hopping inside the tent, we've got the mattress. And the first thing that I did when I got this was I actually added a one and a half inch memory foam to put on top of the mattress because the mattress itself is just a little thin. But adding that memory foam is perfect. I get a great night's rest up in here. Also, there is an LED strip in the rear that came with this tent. It is super bright. I actually don't even use it. I have just a little LED lantern that I hang from the top and that works perfectly for me. Now inside, I've got uh, sleeping bags, I've got full size pillows, and I've got a blanket, which when it's cold out, it keeps me plenty warm. And when we're in the summer and the desert heat, what I'll usually do is just throw a little fan inside there. It keeps things nice and cool. It's very nice, comfortable inside. I get questions all the time about, does it keep you warm at night? Uh, you gotta throw some blankets in there. You gotta keep some heat in there. I know some folks like to add some artificial heaters, you know, electric blankets and that kind of stuff. I've never needed to do that. I just got a good warm sleeping bag in there. Inside the tent is really nice. It breathes pretty well. There's some little ventilation uh, guys up in the corner and it's pretty comfortable. Now we're gonna get to your specific questions here in a minute, but let me just recap my pro and con list. So pro for me is the durability of the tent. This thing is holding up really well for only $800. All the fabric, all the poles, all of it is holding up really well. The other pro for me has been that it is only 116 pounds. And now while that sounds like a lot of weight, it's really not in the rooftop tent world. I'm glad that it only weighs 116 pounds because that matters when I'm on road and off road and especially taking it on and off. I'm glad it's that light. Another pro for me is actually inside the space. I'm six foot two and me and my son or me and my wife can fit in there very comfortably. This is only the two man tent. They do sell a tent that's a little bit larger. I went with the smaller one and it's perfect. You know, I can get dressed in there. I sleep in there. I got plenty of room, no complaints. I love having a rooftop tent. Okay, now some of my criticisms, which I've already mentioned. One is that ladder. Yep, 
I do not like that ladder at all. <laughs> My other criticism uh, would be that LED light a thing is just too bright. It's nice to have that light in there, but when you're in there, you're actually kind of blinding yourself. It's just a little too much. Uh, the other con, and I kind of alluded to this a little bit, is the rain fly. Now, it, perfect for making sure that you stay dry and it's got some little straps on the side that you can kind of secure it down but when that wind is blowing really hard those things are kind of flapping on the side and it's tough to sleep at night I actually took it off one night when the wind was so tough uh, so that's a con it does flap around a little bit okay let's go pull up a chair and answer some of your questions so you guys submitted a lot of great questions and I took a lot of the questions that were asked most and uh, kind of compiled them here and so we're going to answer about 10 questions and hopefully that'll help answer anything that we didn't talk about already. So I'm just going to jump right in this. So Charles from Patreon, uh, which I really appreciate your support on Patreon there Charles, he asks, how well does the tent breathe at night? And I've actually never had any issues. There are two little vents on each side of the tent that have these little covers on them that allow kind of air to flow in and out of there. There's only one time where I've had any kind of condensation built up inside the tent because those had kind of been mashed down and I didn't take the time to open those up. Uh, but otherwise, it breathes pretty well. Randy from the Trail Recon Facebook group, which is, if you have not been over to the Trail Recon Facebook group, go check that out. That allows you to post over there and ask questions. We have a good time over on the Facebook group. He says, uh, how do you keep warm during freezing conditions? And would you recommend using a Mr. Buddy? So I have a very warm sleeping bag uh, and I usually throw one or two blankets in there. Usually works out pretty well for me when it's cold. Now, the Mr. Buddy, those are uh, little propane heaters, and I know a lot of people use those. I'm not a fan of those. It just would worry me too much that, you know, the fire hazard. Sometimes what people will do is if they have like an annex down below their tent, uh, they'll put one of those Mr. Buddies down there, turn on that heater, and then that heat radiates up into the tent. Uh, I don't have that, so putting one of those Mr. Buddies inside the tent for me, not something I'm willing to do. Rob Wirtz from Instagram wants to know, how stable is it on the highway and on the trails? So 116 pounds on the roof, you notice it, absolutely. But it's not crazy. I mean, I think I expected more from it. And I'm probably a little used to it now because I've just had it up there for so long. Uh, on the freeway, you know, you notice it, especially if it's windy, you can kind of feel it up there. But my suspension is set up that it's pretty stable. I don't feel like I'm floating down the road. And I do lose a little bit of gas mileage, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, but I will say on the trails, it just kind of depends on what trail I'm on. If I'm on a trail where I'm really getting flexy, which if I kind of know that's where I'm going, I usually don't take the rooftop tent. Uh, you, you notice it, you can feel that 116 pounds kind of leaning, uh, but I just take it easy and keep that in mind. But most of the time I haven't had any problems with it. Alberto from Patreon, thank you uh, Alberto for your support. Um, would you recommend your tent or Marco's tent if budget wasn't an issue? So if you guys have followed the channel for a while, you'll know Marco has a tent from uh, Free Spirit and he's got that little remote control, which is really nice. I mean, he just pops a tent, unhooks, unhooks it and throws remote control and it just opens right up. It's a really nice tent. His doesn't fold out over the side of the Jeep. It just covers the top roof. If budget was not an issue, I would get a clamshell tent, I think. I don't think I would buy this one. I don't think, Marco's is really nice. Uh, but I think I would prefer a hard tent where it just pops right up and I just climb right in uh, because at the end of the day I don't need a big old tent I just need some place to sleep I actually don't hang out in there so something like a James Baroud or something like that would be nice I'd love to have Marco's tent with the remote control that's totally cool okay pages are sticking together here all right uh, Sean from Facebook asks would you rather have it on your Jeep or on a trailer? And that's a great question. I don't wheel with a trailer, uh, but I think a trailer is a great option, especially if you're someone that likes to go base camp somewhere. That's not usually what I do. Usually we're out going from point A to point B to point C to point D, and we're constantly on the move, and we're hitting some difficult trails along the way, and so towing a trailer for me just isn't that practical. But if I was gonna go somewhere and base camp, I definitely would prefer to have the rooftop tent on the trailer and not on the Jeep. So good question, Sean. J. Bad Owie, I don't know if I said that right, uh, from Instagram asks, 
how often and when do you take it off? So I don't leave it on all the time. Usually a day or two before I know I'm going on a trip, my son and I will throw it up there depending on what his schedule is and my schedule is. And then usually I'll take it off usually the day after because usually what I want to do is throw it in the garage, open it up and air it out. So I don't leave it on there all the time. My Jeep's my daily driver. I can't afford that hit with the gas mileage. John from the Trail Recon Face Group, he wants to know, uh, how the ladder and tent would hold up for a heavier guy. Uh, so look, I'm just a skinny tall guy, but for bigger fellas, uh, that's a good question. I think the ladder is strong enough. You know, you get those pins locked in there. I, I don't have any complaints about the ladder strength. I just don't like the ladder. Uh, as far as the tent, you know, it, you can hold some, quite a few folks up there. I mean, my son and I have gotten up there and he, he weighs more than I do. I've never questioned the ability for that tent platform to hold our weight. So I think, you know, a big fella and, a, you know, a couple big folks up there, no problems at all. Wayne from Facebook asks, uh, what maintenance have you done to the tent? Uh, anything special? So no, I mean, I keep it clean, obviously some just general cleaning, but what I do is when I get home, I make sure that I air it out, especially if there was a lot of condensation when we were out camping or if there was any rain, you've got to open it up. You got to let that thing air out and you know, you just keep everything clean inside because the last thing you want to do is have anything dirty or smelly when you secure it and wrap it all up because then it would just not be pleasant. Uh, let's see who we got. Uh, Kyle Bazzi from the YouTube community tab. Uh, how does the tent do in protecting you from the outside elements? Yeah, it does great. I've got no complaints in the wind, the rain. Uh, it's been perfect. I couldn't ask for anything more. I mean, really I've, I've slept in ground tents and been out in the desert when it would be windy and the tent would lay flat. Like I'd be sleeping in the tent and it would just fall on me flat. The worst thing ever. I've never had anything close to that happen in this tent. Uh, and Todd from the Trail Recon uh, Facebook group, would you buy it again? That's a great question. Would I buy it again? I think uh, the answer to that is no, I wouldn't buy it again. What I would like to do is actually save up my money and buy the clamshell style tent, the hard shell tent that just a couple straps and just pops right up. Uh, the big reason for me is I don't need a tent that folds out over the side. Just to have something that's simple, pops up, um, has that hard shell and I can just climb right in and out, I think that's worth it. I mean, it's twice the price, a little even three times the price. So saving up for it uh, would be, you know, would be tough. So 800 bucks for this tent, I can't complain. So. I hope I have answered most of the questions out there, but I know there's probably still a few questions out there that you all have. So throw them in the comments, guys, and I'll do my best to answer as many of those questions as I can. I'm gonna throw up a couple of videos here that you might also be interested in, so go check those out. Please make sure that you travel the trails responsibly, and if you're visiting Trail Recon for the first time, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.